Anybody in here has never had a problem? No takers? Well, I read about this incident of an individual who had a problem. So I want to share the problem with you. Now, although the title of my talk is So What's Your Problem, it's not to compare it with this man's problem or vice versa because you can't compare individual problems with each other because we're all different, okay? However, this particular individual was involved in a serious, very severe logging accident in 1973. And because of the f tree or whatever it was that fell on him or whatever, <clears throat> he ended up with three open skull fractures. Mm. Thank you. And a ruptured spinal cord in three places that was classified as an incomplete break. And 11 ruptured discs. And 16 broken and or crushed vertebrae. And a broken pelvis. And the right scapula, the collarbone, broken in nine places. And a severe brachial plexus. Now get ready for this next hand. And 19 broken bones. All the ribs on the right side and several on the left. <clears throat> this individual said that his darkest, darkest moments were during his journey of recovery, acceptance, and rebuilding his life. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, who would think that, I mean, that you could even rebuild a life after you've been injured that seriously? <clears throat> He was unable to work and he was confined to a wheelchair for 27 months. Then he decided to start painting and on the weekends he would go into town and sell his paintings. And it was a very, he said it was a very painful time as you, we can't even begin to imagine how painful. And yet he said he was filled with an unstoppable determination to succeed in a way that most people wouldn't attempt. How many of us would have given up or just said this is too much or let me out of here. He saw an ad for a truck driver for the mule. And he went, he had a friend of his drive him while he was in the wheelchair to the mule. And he told the guy, the owner, he wanted to apply for the job. <laughs> yeah, that's what the owner did. The owner laughed and he said, how are you going to drive a truck? And the guy says, well, if you put hand controls on it, I can handle it. Now, how many of you would think of that? How many of us would think, if you put hand controls on it, I can handle it? So, <clears throat> the owner of the factory, the mill, put handles on the truck, and a guy passed all the tests and everything and became a truck driver. And... <clears throat> He proved his ability and he was hired. He shared that at, at this point, a feeling of wholeness started to come over him. And it was because he was working again. And you know, this is something in most of us, we are so involved in our doing and we put all the emphasis on our doing and we may lose the emphasis of our being. And when it comes to having, being, and doing, it's being first, doing second, and having third. So the most important part is being. So he felt good and he, he was feeling like his being was coming alive again. And so he wanted to focus on making a better life for himself and, and his family. <clears throat> I thought this was interesting. He said, each time I'm confronted with a difficult time, I find it easier to look for the positive in, within the challenge. Wow. How many of us could take that positive in a, of an attitude? And this is what he, he said. Um, actually, this is from Ernest Holmes. <clears throat> Ernest Holmes says, life is about how we choose to act and react in every situation. That man could have act, acted, defeated, down, beaten down, finished, done, 
And instead, he came back. He not only, he not only came back, but the man I'm talking about is D. Gary Young. How many of you have heard of D. Gary Young? D. Gary Young is the chairman and the founder of Young Living Essential Oils. This is an international firm, an international firm. Uh, Victoria was involved with Essential Living Oils, and I use them at the current time through my oriental doctor who is involved with them. <clears throat> now, as if his accomplishments weren't enough, uh, in the last year or so, Dr. D. Gary Young competed in and completed the Tustamena 200 and Willow 300 Alaskan dog sled races. <laughs> and he used the money to raise money for the earthquake struck Yarsa, Nepal. He raised $40,000 to build eight new homes there 100% of all the monies went there. His company covered the administrative costs. 100% of, and it's still going on, and 100% of every donation goes directly to the Foundation Rebuild Nepal Project. Now, in October of 2011, Young Living opened in Singapore. And they had an annual wellness expo that attracted thousands of people. Recently, they became partners with um, the Sacred Sandal uh, Company in Aus Perth, Australia. And because of that un unprecedented growth, they formed a partnership. He formed a partnership with Quintus Sandal Sandalwood Partner Farm, which has 5.4 million sandalwood trees. And they use these trees to make the sandalwood essential oil. Mm. You know, I thought about this, and <clears throat> I thought about, wow, what, is, what does it take to go through that? You know, um, the courage, the faith, the belief, the perseverance, the indomitable spirit. And I was looking for <clears throat> something that I could relate to this. And I was thinking about, I don't know how the man made it through it, okay? But I remember when, um, after the doctor had removed the tumor from my bladder, and he came into the room and he said, um, well, Jack, he said, you'll have uh, months of chemo and months of radiation, and then we'll have to take your bladder out. And then everybody left the room. So I'm sitting there, all by, lying there all by myself, and I said, okay, love and source, what's this all about? What, is there something I'm supposed to learn here? What is this about? And no answers, no answers, no answers. So then I said, okay, I don't need to know. I just surrender this to you because I know you love me totally and unconditionally, and you want the best for me. And whether it's life or death, I just surrender it to you. And I went into the deepest surrender of my life. You know what I got out of it? I got the peace that surpasses understanding. I have a peace now and a, a freedom of fear. So many of us have so many fears to, dwell, to deal with. And they're justified fears and sicknesses and illnesses and loss of jobs and, and everything else. <clears throat> Except that when, when we make that surrender to the divine and just turn our lives over to the divine, <clears throat> it's not that we're, we're giving up. We're giving our difficulties and our challenges away and we're trusting that a power and a force far greater than the human self will help us. Well, I remember <clears throat> the first time I went back to see my onco oncologist after the six-month CT scan, and he, he said he looked at it, and then he's scratching his head. And I said, well, what, what, what's going on? He said, well, he says, um, 
amazing, amazing. And I said, what's amazing? He said, well, I can see where I removed the tumor, but there's nothing else. There's nothing else. And I said, you did a beautiful job. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a, oh, oh, yeah. mm, I just got a spasm on that one. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, most spiritual people go through practices of surrender. And my prayer every day for 30, year, 30 years is, has been, you know, I surrender myself to be the clear vessel of your expression, loving source, of acting through me as yourself. And then we will go through multiple surrenders in different circumstances. Then it comes down to what is the greatest thing in our life. And for most people, the greatest thing in our life is life. We don't want to die. Well, I remember in that moment, I said, you know, I surrender it. I said, I refer, would prefer to live, but I surrender it to you and your will, trusting that you have my best interest. I had no idea what would lay ahead. But when we go into the deep surrender, we truly find that peace that surpasses understanding. We all have challenges, and at the current time, we all have certainly intensifying challenges, or at least most of us. Do we have anybody here who doesn't have a challenge at this time? No, and I can't raise my hand either, okay? So we all have challenges, and the intensifying planet energies bring up the shadow side of our consciousness for healing. Well, what have we all suppressed in our past lifetime? What have we suppressed since childhood? What have we suppressed before the time of birth? <laughs> I've counseled thousands of people, and in a number of different instances, they will share their experiences with me. So I thought I'd, <clears throat> I'd share one with you, and I asked her if I could, and she said yes. And it was a friend of mine that came to me and said, I would like, you know, she knew that I had taken hypnosis classes and did some hypnosis on the side. So she said, I would like you to hypno hypnotize me and take me back to birth. I said, okay. So I do it, and then I can see she's kind of uncomfortable. And I said, uh, what's the matter? And she says, oh, it's my sister. I'm thinking, your sister? I'm your best friend. You never told me you had a sister. You know, I've been for years. But I didn't say anything. And I said, well, what about your sister? And she says, well, she doesn't want to come in. She says, mom's a real bitch. Excuse me, but that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> she said, and life with her would be hell. So uh, I took her back out of it and... I said, what was that all about? She said, I don't know. I said, you never told me you had a sister. She said, I don't. I've never had a sister. I thought, wow, that's strange. And so I, I walked away perplexed on that one, to say the least, and so did she. So a week later, she calls me up, and she says, Jack. She says, I called my mother. And I asked my mother, Mom, did I ever have a sister? dead silence for 30 seconds. Then the mother said, yes, she was stillborn twin. Stillborn twin. The spirit made a choice to not come in. Yes. So there, there is much within us that we don't know about. And at this time, the time can be very challenging, and especially with all the physical things that so many people are going through. And myself, I'm going through my challenges too, and that's, you know, that's just part of the game and it's part of, uh, uh, so whatever we've pushed down has to come to the surface for clearing to, so that we can prepare ourselves for moving into the higher dimension as part of our evolution. And we will be evolving, you know, on an ongoing basis. Ernest Holmes says that we 
evolve infinitely. So here's the thing. We all have our challenges one way or another. And what do you do with your challenges? You share them with your neighbors, your friends, your spouse, your friends, whatever. That increases the energy. If you have a problem, yes, you can share it with your spouse, and you can share it with your best friend. And then go share it with a practitioner, minister, or therapist so they can help you with it. The shadow side of each of us is the childhood beliefs that we formed in the first six years. And all the different psychology books that you read and so forth, whether it's Carl Rogers or Jung or whoever it may be, they all say the same thing, that basically in those first five or six years, we form the basic character, characteristic beliefs that form our lifestyle. Well, what they're really saying is that we form a belief as a result of the incident, and then that belief comes out usually in one sentence. It comes out like, I'm never loved, I'm never heard, I'm never valued, I'm never wanted, I'm never seen, I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, whatever it may be. I always felt inferior to other people until after I got into programming. And then when I found that I was better than most all the other programmers, you know, I had to question myself. <laughs> well, I found out that I've been blessed with an extremely wonderful mind and it served me extremely well in the programming, extremely well. I really excelled in that and that was, that was my niche. So we all have these, but we all have these childhood beliefs. So here's the thing, when, when that, those emotions come up, they're always from the child, they're never from the adult, okay? I have never seen any come from the adult in thousands of people of counseling. It's always from the inner child and that basic belief. So when the emotions come up, it's important for us to get in touch with it and find out what that inner child needs <coughs> and what the belief is and then what, what we need to use science of mind for in order to reverse that situation. So if it's that I'm, I'm I can never have a decent relationship. In science of mind, we would say, I know how my divinely ideal relationship. And if it's physical problems, it's that the perfection of my spiritual body is continually flowing in and through my physical body. And if it's a job, you decree that you have the job. And the other thing that most people don't do and that needs to be done is to ask for help. <clears throat> the higher beings can't help you if you don't ask for help because they will not violate your free will. So call on the higher beings. Now, you know, some people pray to Jesus, some to Buddha, some to Krishna. You know, there's a whole slew of angels and saints and archangels and everything you can. And I decided that uh, that was all too complex. <laughs> so when I do my prayer, I just say in the name of Father, Mother, God, I call on other higher beings. So let me go into a prayer right now using that. As all right, I'll wrap up the talk with it. In the oneness with Father, Mother, God, I call on the higher beings to join us in this moment. And in this moment, we recognize there is one life Love, power, strength, knowledge, essence, spirit, force, power, the loving source, the God of our being. And each of us is intimately, inseparably a part of it. In this oneness, the word that we speak is the word of the divine itself, where there is no separation between the creator and its creations. And so I speak the word and we speak the word for each person here that whatever our problems are, we're able to release them. We're able to see them as we need to, do what we need to to heal them, heal the problems and release them and stand in the power of the spirit in the human self in that indomitable 
human spiritual combination where we can accomplish amazing things, we can heal amazing things, we can do amazing things because we are amazing beings. And so for myself and everyone here, I speak that whatever we need <clears throat> to heal is faci facilitated and accelerated. The power of spirit coming in and through each one of us powerfully, lovingly, and we feel that sweet, beautiful love. That beautiful love that puts us on tears within the heart. And we know that we have been heard because we have felt that beautiful love. And with it comes the message that yes, my beloved, your word is fulfilled. So it is always with great humbleness that we surrender our prayer to the infinite intelligence, love, and power of the universe. And with unspeakable gratitude that we know our prayer has been heard, we will walk in the peace and know that the best and the greatest for our highest good is being done for us. With that reassurance in our mind, and knowing that that love, that perfect love, casts out all fear. We let that love fill our beings and we surrender to it and let it embrace us in its beautiful wholeness and perfection. And we walk in peace, knowing all is in perfect divine order. And so it is. Just take a moment to let it integrate. And I know you each will walk through a brighter day every day. <laughs>